This presentation is about mechanical power when it comes to minimize ventilator-induced lung injury. This study is a review and it was published in Intensive Care Medicine Experimental in 2019. The purpose of the study was to make the quantification of mechanical power at the bedside and its relevance when setting a safe mechanical ventilation. Mechanical power has been raised more and more as a hot topic in mechanical ventilation when it comes to optimize ventilator settings on the critically ill patients. What is mechanical power? Is the amount of energy that is transferred from the ventilator to the respiratory system within a given time frame and it's expressed in joules per minute. What is the rationale behind it? There are different components which may contribute for the total mechanical power applied on a respiratory system and that can increase the risk of ventilator-induced lung injury. Some of them are related to what the clinician decides to set on the ventilator at the bedside, such as tidal volume, airway pressure, flow, rate or PEEP, and some of them are depending on the lung conditions of the patient and those lung conditions impact on the peak pressure, plateau pressure, as well on the driving pressure. From the physics, we know that mechanical energy is the sum of potential energies and kinetic energies, and this principle can be applied to the respiratory system. Potential energies are stored energy. That means the static component of the total energy and is reflected by the PEEP level. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, which comprehends the energy needed to generate movement by overcoming the elastic and resistive forces of the respiratory system. What is energy transfer from the respiratory muscles or mechanical ventilator to the patient's lungs? With each breath delivered by the mechanical ventilator, there is a certain amount of energy that is transferred to the patient's respiratory system. This amount of energy is mainly used either to overcome resistance of the airways as well to be able to expand the thorax wall. The degree of lung injury depends on the amount of power transferred from the mechanical ventilator to the patient's lungs. The causes of Willi can be grouped together and be described as a single physical entity reflect on this equation where each component has its own weight on the total calculation of the mechanical power. How is mechanical power calculated? The authors of this review describe three methods. The first method comprehends the analysis of a quasi-static PV curve of the respiratory system. From this low flow PV curve, we calculate first the total area of the PV rectangle. Then we calculate the blue area, which is the area below the PV curve, and we subtract it to the total area of the rectangle. In the end, we have the white area, which corresponds to energy transfer to the respiratory system. This value, multiplied by the respiratory rate, gives the mechanical power. However, using this method, the potential energy that is generating static strain in the respiratory system is not considered, so PEEP is not part of this calculation. In the second method, the authors used an equation that includes all the areas that are shown on the PV graph. They use the calculation of the resistive component plus the elastic component as well as the static component. As a result, the calculation of the mechanical power of the respiratory system can be described by this equation shown below. The major advantage of this method, according to the authors, is that it enables the quantification of the relative contribution of the different components, like tidal volume, respiratory rate, PEEP, I ratio, airflow, and by that they can predict the effect of their individual changes. The third method is about doing intratidal inspiratory holds while monitoring the transpulmonary pressure. What they measure here is not the energy of the respiratory system, 
but instead is the energy of the lung and therefore the mechanical power of the lung itself. This calculation uses the transpulmonary driving pressure instead of the airway driving pressure, and this calculation does not take in account the resistive component, either the PEEP level. Nevertheless, this equation computes the most important component, which is the driving mechanical power. What about the interaction of a certain level of mechanical power in regards of the baseline lung conditions? To better assess the impact of the mechanical power on the lungs, some authors mention that we should normalize it. That means correlate the mechanical power of the lung surface that is available for ventilation. If the lung surface able to accommodate the mechanical power transfer is large, villi is less likely to occur. On the other hand, if the lung surface is small, villi is more likely to develop for the same mechanical power delivered. And it's important to bear in mind that when it comes to villi progression, also the open-closed units increase as more severe is the lung. That's why patients with potential for recruitment should be treated with high PIP levels and recruitment maneuvers because it increases the lung surface able to ventilate and therefore we can reduce the total mechanical power. At the end, we can assess recruitability looking at the mechanical power. This is a study where more than 8,000 patients receiving invasive ventilation for at least 48 hours were analyzed and they found that mechanical power alone was independently associated with in-hospital mortality. Also, there is a consistent increase in the risk of death when the threshold of 17 joules per minute was overpassed. This is a study done in PEAKS regarding severity of lung damage in relation to the mechanical power. On this study, mechanical power was defined as the function of transpulmonary pressure, tidal volume and respiratory rate. So we are talking about transpulmonary mechanical power. On group A, the PEAKS have been ventilated with high tidal volume and different respiratory rate. On group B, they were receiving low tidal volumes and high respiratory rates. They observed that with a mechanical power around 12 joules per minute, the CT scan showed mostly isolated densities and above 12 joules per minute, the pigs developed whole lung edema. It didn't matter the group, mechanical power by itself was associated with villi if the 12 joules per minute threshold was exceed. We know that we should keep mechanical power low, so on practice, how can I modify ventilator settings? Tidal volume seems to have an important weight in the total mechanical power. In a study from Gattinoni, he observed that when tidal volume was increased by 20%, mechanical power increased by 37%. In an experimental study with induced ERDS in rats, at a low mechanical power, high tidal volume was associated with villi. In this case, maintaining low mechanical power did not prevent lung damage when tidal was high, and the control of tidal seems more important than control of respiratory rate. What about flow rate? In an experimental study in large animals, they found that mechanical power increased 37% when inspiratory flow rate increased by 20%. Also here, they found that mechanical power was increased from 2 to 22 joules per minute when they increased both inspiratory flow and respiratory rate. They observe also that sudden deflations from high airway pressure have the potential to trigger lung damage from a vascular point of view, especially in fragile disease lungs. Such conditions of high kinetic energy transfer, vascular flows and pressures are powerful determinants of villi. They also mentioned that mechanical power may be probably higher in volume controlled ventilation than in pressure controlled ventilation probably because with volume control ventilation, the mean airway pressure is higher. 
Talking about PEEP effect on the mechanical power calculation, they observed that mechanical power barely increased when PEEP was increased by 20%. There are several studies showing that the effect of the static strain is lower than the kinetic forces. Nevertheless, PEEP is the potential energy stored on the lung structures, and the rationale to include PEEP as a component of mechanical power is that at FRC, the lung is already under stress and strain. So with PEEP application, there is an increase in lung volume corresponding to an increase in the end expiratory lung volume, and by that, it modifies the lung surface area able to receive the stress released by the mechanical ventilator. But of course, mechanical power on respiratory system depends on the potential recruitability of the patient's lungs. In conclusion, the degree of lung damage in Veli can be linked to the amount of energy transferred from the mechanical ventilator to the respiratory system within a given time frame. There are several ways of calculating mechanical power, from simple formulas to highly complex equations. Efforts should focus on normalizing mechanical power to the lung surface area amenable to ventilation. PIP has less weight in mechanical power calculations than the kinetic components. Calculating mechanical power is an important step toward better care of critically ill patients.